The coronavirus pandemic has now grown to more than 26 million cases in the United States, while in encouraging news, vaccinations are speeding up. We're joined now by Dr. Summer Johnson McGee, PhD, Dean of the School of Public Health of Health Sciences, excuse me, at the University of New Haven. So let's talk about these vaccinations. The pace has been steadily increasing since President Biden took office. We've got more than 1.3 million doses a week now. We were at less than a million just a couple of weeks ago. So huge progress is being made there. Wondering if you think we'll be able to hit that target of 2 million doses a week anytime soon. I think we absolutely can. I think that the key there is a couple of things, and most importantly, making sure that we have adequate supply chain to make sure that those doses can be manufactured and delivered to the sites. What we're hearing at the local level is that states and, and counties have the vaccination sites ready to go, these large venues. But I think the other piece is making sure that we also have enough vaccinators, that, that personnel, to be able to get those shots in the arms. So between those two things, if we can figure that out, we're going to be able to hit that two million a week goal pretty easily. I'm wondering how much these new mutations that we've continuously kept hearing about, South Africa, Brazil, uh, the UK, how much these new strains kind of change the game, so to speak, uh, in this fight against COVID? Well, really, we're in an arms race now against this virus to see, can we get people vaccinated enough, quickly enough, before these new, more contagious, more transmissible strains really take hold and become the dominant strains? And so vaccination is one key component of that. The faster we can get people to have even some kind of immunity, even though we've seen some of these vaccines now that are being studied and being tested against these new strains, aren't quite as effective as they are against some of those original strains, they are still effective. So it's gonna slow the spread of those more aggressive mutants, which will mean ultimately we're going to be able to get control of the spread overall of the virus. So the U.S. isn't alone in this, and we've seen other countries, you know, around the world, some doing incredibly well when it comes to uh, vaccinating. I think of Israel, but then we we have other countries that are not doing so well. The pace is not uh, as great uh, as we would like it to be. And obviously this pandemic is a global fight. So then what you're just mentioning, is there a chance or a possibility that some of these new strains might take hold? And because these vaccinations are not as effective that we might have to, I don't wanna say go back to the drawing board, uh, but that we might have to kind of start this whole process all over again with different vaccinations or different vaccines that have been you know, retooled to be able to fight these new mutations. I think that's very likely. I think just like we do with the flu vaccine every year, we have to do our best guess and our predictions about what are the dominant strains in any given year or in any given country likely to be, and to include those strains, that mRNA, into those vaccines if we're talking about Pfizer or Moderna. So I think we can do that. I think we're likely to see for those who got vaccinations very early on, the need for some booster shots or additional vaccination to come forward. But I think we are likely to see the continual need for updating and honing which strains are in these vaccines and people getting vaccinated, hopefully not more than once a year, but maybe initially at least a few times until we figure out what strains are really going to dominate in what parts of the world. Wait a minute. So I have definitely seen headlines that, you know, a lot of experts are saying coronavirus is here to stay. Um, we're going to have to be dealing with this for a while. But what you are saying sounds as if we are going to have to get vaccinated against coronavirus every single year, the same way people go out and get their flu shot. And if they don't, that the opportunity lies for people like they do with the flu for a couple hundred thousand people every year to die from the flu, that we're gonna also have a couple hundred thousand a year, uh, people a year dying from coronavirus each year. Is that what you're saying right now? I think that's a, a scenario that we seriously have to plan for. I think that the reality is, is that the way we're seeing and how quickly this virus is, is mutating as it spreads around the globe in, in new hosts, unless we're really able to slow down the spread and to give this virus less opportunity to mutate, maybe once we have you know, 7 billion people on the planet vaccinated, we won't see that kind of mutation and spread, but we need to get to a very high level of vaccination compliance across the planet before we can really slow this virus down. So I do think what most governments are planning on is that this vaccination scheme is going to be something that we're going to be doing 
for the foreseeable future until we really get control and we don't see spread happening on a global scale. I feel incredibly naive right now. I totally thought that coronavirus was going to be like polio. Sure, it, it, it does exist out there, but really no one gets it and everyone gets vaccinated against it. It's a little bit depressing to hear that that might not be the case, at least for the next couple of years. Um, I want to talk now about the hospitalizations and the case counts that we are seeing. Let's give some good news uh, for the folks at home because cases are on the decline. Hospitalizations are on the decline. Do you think that we've turned the corner? I think that we're on our way to turning that corner. I think there is very good news out there. I think that the consistent messaging that we've been getting from the federal government about the importance of masking, the importance of getting tested, that is going to continue to help us see reduced case numbers and reduce serious cases and hospitalizations. I think vaccination is, of course, going to help that tremendously. What we've seen, even with some of these strains that our current vaccines are a little less effective against, they prevent serious hospitalizations and deaths. So even though people may still get sick with COVID-19, even after they're vaccinated, these vaccines are certainly likely to decrease the severity of disease that people are experiencing as well. And I think it's important to remember, we're very early on in this experiment with vaccination and really understanding this virus. So it is possible that we could see coronavirus go to, to near zero in some communities with very high levels of compliance with vaccination and where we truly have herd immunity. I just don't think we're going to get there this year, 2021. I think we're going to be at least a few years away before we see um, this virus not having an impact on our daily lives. Okay, so then a question on behalf of many of my colleagues with children uh, who have been doing a lot of homeschooling uh, themselves, which is the question of summer camps. We are a ways away yet uh, before we send off any children to any sleepaway camps or day camps. Uh, wondering what your thoughts are on that. Is it safe? Is that something that would be okay for parents to do? Well, I think it's really going to depend on what we see coming out of these clinical trials that we're doing related to vaccines in children. Are we able to get children vaccinated to go to summer camps this summer, to go back to school in the fall, and to be able to do on-ground learning and other in-person experiences? I think those trials are really going to be critical to know whether or not those younger children, it's safe to have them vaccinated. If we can, and we can get the doses out there, I see no reason why children shouldn't be able to go to summer camps and go back to full in-person school by the fall. And I think that is a goal of, of everyone, not just parents who are homeschooling their children, uh, but also a goal at the federal level as well, to be able to get back to full in-person school uh, by fall of 2021. All right, a lot of positive news there for some of the parents who are watching and at least want their children to go take two week break from them <laughs> uh, over the summer. Dr. Summer Johnson McGee, PhD from the University of New Haven. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.